Uh, five years ago, only five years ago, when my patience ran out with the pointless debate about whether climate change is happening, and if it is, whether it's created by us. This has been a sterile debate for years, and I'm going to tell you why. And I'm going to introduce to you my Russian roulette theory. Most of us are not scientists. Like it or not, we depend on scientists to measure and interpret what's going on for us. Something like 95% of scientists agree that climate change is happening, we're creating it, and it will destroy humanity in the end, unless we act now. 5% of scientists disagree. Of course, those 5% may be right. If they're right, and there's no climate problem, then all that money spent on renewable energy, insulation, and the rest will have been unnecessary. But so what? If nothing else, we'll get less air pollution, we need that in Oxford, and warmer homes, and jobs will have been created. If they're wrong, however, and there's a 95% chance they are, my grandchildren, if I ever have any, will face a very bleak future. Okay. So, let's load the dice in favour of the climate change sceptic. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that not 5%, but three times as many, 17% of scientists say there's no climate problem. Here's a revolver. I want it to be a real replica, but apparently I'd have been arrested if I did that. To play Russian roulette, I will put one bullet into the chamber, one of the six chambers, leave the other five chambers empty, I close my eyes, spin the cassette, point the gun at my head, and pull the trigger. If I'd lost, I guess I wouldn't know much about it. Frankly, I value my own life a little bit more than to take stupid risks like that. But a climate change sceptic is a thousand times more reckless than that, because the sceptic is effectively prepared to fill Five of the chambers with a bullet, leaving one chamber empty. And then the climate change sceptic closes their eyes, spins the chamber, but instead of pointing the gun at their own head, they line up their grandchildren in a line so that if the bullet's alive, it will kill all of them in one stroke. And then they pull the trigger. Friends, the only debate to be had the only climate change debate to be had is whether the human race can wean the global economy off fossil fuel fast enough. It's the only debate. No amount of campaigning is going to achieve this unless the people with their hands on the levers of power have that sense of urgency. Now there's always going to be people with their hands on the levers of power, whether you love them or hate them, whether you vote for them or whether you don't bother. The Green Movement must be prepared to take political responsibility for leadership. It must have a political wing, and we are it. The mainstream parties whose political ideologies were formed between one and three hundred years ago have tried to graft the climate change issue onto ideologies that simply cannot adapt in time. The issues that divide them now, which therefore dominate the media, are trivial in comparison with this issue. The Grey parties are a long, winding road to a dead end, and UKIP is the car crash at the end of it. People used to laugh at the Green Party, but their smiles are starting to fade. Here's a party whose ideology is rooted and grounded in humanity's relationship with the planet, which has worked its policies upwards and outwards from the starting point. The policies are there on the website. You'd be surprised at their range, detail, and coherence. Yay! Yay!